everyone. Gabe here from The Wire. Uh, greetings from Calabria in southern Italy. Um, apologies, we didn't get an update yesterday. I needed a day off after um, uh, posting videos almost every day. And so yesterday was a nice Shabbat for me um, to enjoy my vacation a little more and have some time with um, friends here. And uh, in the meantime, there's been a few developments that I think are important to share and um, some things to, to discuss wider um, wider concerns uh, that are taking place actually mostly outside of Israel at this point. Um, <clears throat> as many of you know, if you follow The Wire on X, and if you don't, you should. Um, our handle is at FAI underscore wire. Uh, if you are on Twitter, AKA X, whatever you want to call it. Um, we are there and uh, tweeting or posting or whatever you want to call that um, constantly throughout the day. It's almost real time updates. So we do our best to be, there's obviously a lot of misinformation out there right now. And so we do our best to uh, use trusted sources and, and vet information from at least one, from at least two or more sources before we post. We're good about 90% of the time, 95% of the time. Sometimes we get it wrong, but we retract what we need to. So um, hope you can follow us there and get some good information. Otherwise, um, the summary of things that are important for you to know is at this point, uh, the Israeli military has made it official. They are going into the Gaza Strip on a, uh, in a ground offensive. Um, it will be multi-pronged. It will be land, air, and sea. Um, obviously the air campaign has already been going on for a week they've dropped um, over uh, 6,000 munitions on the Gaza Strip at this point and leveled um, key areas in Gaza City. Uh, the IDF warned uh, Gazans uh, in Gaza City, which is towards the north of the Strip, to evacuate towards Wadi Gaza, which is kind of in the middle of the Strip, <clears throat> around the... Um, around the so-called refugee camps. Um, and Khan Yunus is south of that. So about half of the Gaza Strip lives north of Wadi Gaza and has been advised to evacuate. Um, and thousands of Gazans are doing exactly that. And there's there was a lot of hand wringing yesterday in, in, on the political scene internationally and um, in the media with, well, Gazans can evacuate. They have nowhere to go. Um, it's too dense. The population is, is you know, the city's too dense to allow for that kind of outflow of um, people. But what we actually saw was thousands of people on the road leaving. Um, it would be about, even if you're walking, it's about a five or six hour walk to get to where you're going. Um, contrary to popular belief, Gazans are not out of water. Um, they have, so Israel only supplies Gaza, the, the entire strip with about 10% of its water. Um, they also have a desalinization plant in Gaza that pumps water from the sea. Um, so there's, there's plenty of water inside Gaza, not a whole lot of electricity. There was like 2G internet up until today, there were still people posting stuff from inside Gaza until today. Uh, the IDF said they're going to completely cut off the internet here pretty soon. Um, and then they're going to start going in. There was a very limited ground incursion yesterday. Some tanks going into the periphery of the Strip. Um, no official word from the IDF on what that was about. Maybe kind of like a clearing, a clearance operation. And maybe they had a lead on where some hostages might be that the tally of hostages is now around uh, 150 to 200 so um it's unclear at this time what that was about but um the big push seems imminent probably tomorrow um so today is is saturday evening here i would expect and i could be wrong but i would expect sometime tomorrow to start getting news about things happening maybe even sometime later tonight um, so uh, roughly 2,000 Gazans have died in the airstrike so far. Again, largely because um, Hamas ensconces their fighters and their missile launchers in homes and schools and hospitals and mosques and places that you know, obviously 
if the IDF sees a launcher uh, launching missiles into Israel, which they often do, and they have to take it out, if it's in somebody's home or apartment building or something like that, unfortunately, um, people who shouldn't have to die will will die. Um, that is the reality of, of, of the position that Hamas has put its own people in. So um, Israel made it clear the, the lights can come back on. Everything can turn back on if you let the hostages go. And Hamas obviously isn't willing to do that. After Israel, um, after the IDF ordered Gazans to evacuate, drop lethals from the air, um, gave them, and now it's almost 48 hours, um, uh, Hamas told them not to go. Hamas told them to stay because Hamas doesn't care about saving lives in Gaza. Hamas wants as many "quote unquote" martyrs as it can get for its for its war. So that obviously is um, very tragic, very tragic. Um, and the people who have the ability and the will to do so are leaving. Many of those who stay behind are not hiding in their homes; they're out in the streets chanting. So that tells you what their attitude and um, purposes for staying in Gaza City. Um, these are not going to be innocent bystanders. <laughs> these are going to be combatants. Uh, the IDF estimates around 40,000 Hamas uh, terrorists in Gaza City once the IDF breaks through. So this is going to be a rather large operation. Um, so obviously continuing prayer here um, Obviously, pray that they, uh, the IDF and their partners, such as the American uh, Spec Ops, like uh, SEAL Team 6 and Delta Force, would find as many hostages as possible and save lives, as many lives as possible. That civilian casualties would be minimal in the Gaza Strip. Um, and, and we are praying that the IDF, I'm praying anyway, I should say, that the IDF would have success in this operation. I think this is... Um, this is definitely something that needs to happen and th there's no equivocation between two sides here um, so we as believers are not called to fight with the weapons of the world but when we, we are called to pray for those in authority and for righteousness among those who are in authority and there's there's obviously a righteous side in this in this conflict and so that's that's what we're praying for just as we prayed for the coalition in the fight against isis we're praying for the idf and it's and it's um war against ISIS 2.0, a.k.a. Hamas. So um, that is coming soon. Um, in the north, there was uh, another little exchange of, you know, some mortar fire. Hezbollah claimed responsibility for it, claimed they took out some Israeli equipment, no casualties. Um, Israel responded with strikes back into southern Lebanon. Um, but for the most part, no, no big uh, opening there in the north yet. Um, thank the Lord, and we are continuing to pray that that would not become a new front in this conflict. Uh, we'll find out as soon as the IDF goes into Gaza if Hezbollah is going to make good on their threat to um, continue that um, or to jump into the fray. We will see. Otherwise, um, uh, it's a wait and see in the land itself. Around the world, we are seeing... Um, a different type of phenomenon, and that is the ripple effect of events in the land um, going out into the nations. I think it'd be safe at this point, looking at the the scope and the severity of of the events of last uh, Saturday, as being a birth pang, in the sense that Jesus talks about birth pangs in Matthew 24. I think we can call what happened in Israel last Saturday a birth pang. And that, that contraction, so to speak, feeling being felt uh, reverberating out throughout the earth. Um, we're seeing all kinds of interesting reactions. Um, I'd say really strong galvanization for or against, one way or the other. And uh, there's less and less of a middle. And I think that's indicative of what we can expect to see moving forward. Um, there will be less and less of a middle ground in this, um, on this issue of of the Jewish people, and especially the Jewish people in the land, um, there will be a, a point of decision for everyone, and especially for professing believers. Um, what we're seeing right now in the streets, not just in places like Amman, Jordan, 
or Baghdad, Iraq, or Istanbul, Turkey, or Ramallah in the West Bank, where we expect to see huge, um, huge street demonstrations chanting for the death of Israel and chanting in favor of Hamas. We expect to see that in those places. Well, we don't expect to see huge crowds. And when I say huge, I'm talking tens of thousands. We don't expect to see that in London. We don't expect to see that in Paris. Maybe in Paris, but definitely not in London. We don't expect to see that at UCLA or uh, University of Wisconsin or University of Virginia. And yet we see crowds of hundreds, thousands, tens of thousands out on the streets. And not just, you know, calling for social justice. They're wearing pictures of Hamas paragliders on their clothing. You know, the guys that like parachuted in before they started raping and murdering people in heinous ways. They're proudly, boastfully wearing emblems of those guys on their clothing. They're saying, they're chanting things like, we are all Hamas in the United States. They're chanting things like, find the Zionists, we want their blood in London. It is not a stretch to say that Hamas had, the, the, these are not just social justice warriors, these are Hamas warriors. And given the opportunity, with restraints removed, what's to say they wouldn't act in the same way towards not only Jews and their host nations, but anyone that seems to oppose them? So I think we're starting to see maybe some of the early uh, indicators of how far and how deep the reach of Jacob's trouble is going to be across the earth. Um, it's not going to be localized to the Middle East. Um it's going to reach out across the globe in one form or another, and it's going to touch everyone's lives. And so um, I was just impressed again today with the need for us to check our own hearts, check our own minds, seek the Lord, and and be ready. Be ready for that time. So it's getting dark here, as you can see. I've almost lost the sun. I'm working on my camera light here, so I'm going to let you go. We love you all. Um, hopefully, we'll have some updates for you tomorrow that are um, that are significant. Um, we, but we shall see. So, blessings to you all. Love you all, Maranatha.